Okay, in this question, we're asked to find the ideal angle for a bank to turn, um, and that means the angle that makes it so no friction is necessary to go around the turn. So that might seem a little weird if, if you've just seen the flat turn problem. It requires static friction on the tires um, in order to push the car to the center of curvature and cause that centripetal acceleration. But if you bank a turn, and what I've done here, I have an overhead view of the car moving around the turn. And then I put a little eyeball here to show the perspective uh, looking behind the car, and this is what I see. So if I bank a turn, then the normal force is tilted, and a component of that is going to point to the center of curvature. Well, that can supply some centripetal force. And if you get it just right for the speed, you don't need any friction at all. So that's our problem. I'm going to go ahead and put in the force of gravity into this. And one of the really tricky things about this problem is you'll be tempted to decompose the force of gravity into parallel and perpendicular components. Um, but the whole advantage of that was for solving inclined plane problems where the motion was parallel to this incline. And that's no longer the constraint that we're dealing with. The, the constraint that we're dealing with is that there is no vertical motion. So this car is rounding the corner without increasing or decreasing its elevation. And so those tilted coordinates are useless to us in this case. I'm going to put in the normal force. and it points that way. And then what's holding the car up against the force of gravity? I think I got all the forces in here right because there's no friction. What's holding the car up against the force of gravity is just a component of the normal force. So I do have to do a little bit of geometry real quick. There's the perpendicular. That angle is theta. These two lines cross and make these two angles the same. So that's also the same as the banking angle right there. And so this upward component, I'm going to go ahead and try to color code in my traditional way. This upward component is going to be an N times the cosine of theta. So that N times the cosine of theta is what's holding you up against the force of gravity and also has a horizontal component. Given by n sine theta, that's equal to the length of this side up here. And now I can see what's physically causing the centripetal force. What gives us an inward push to the center of curvature? It's this component n sine theta of a tilted normal force. So then I can get into the force analysis using Newton's second law in the x and y directions. In the y direction, F net in the y direction equals m times a y, being a little more formal than usual about it. And F net in the y direction I know is zero because there's no acceleration in the y direction. There is no vertical motion. So my upward force is n cosine theta. That's got to be equal to the downward force mg. Or if I continue my formality here, there's the net force and it's equal to 0. Or I could say n cosine theta equals mg. So there's that little piece. Now in the x direction, f net in the x direction is equal to m times a in the x direction. So that's this A right here if I view it from above or viewed from behind the car. A is pointing to the center of curvature off to the left from that perspective. And there's only one force pointing horizontally, so that's nice. That's N sine theta. And that's equal to M, the mass of the car times the x acceleration. Well, that's going to be a v squared over r. In order to be on a circular path with the speed of v, 
and a radius of r, you must have a center pointing acceleration equal to v squared over r. So I have a system of equations here that has uh, the normal force in it as an unknown and the angle as an unknown. And I'm going to use a standard trick here and divide the bottom equation by the top equation. And that gives me sine over cosine, which results in a tangent. And I've eliminated, eliminated normal force from the equations, which is good, because we don't need it. So I have sine theta over cosine theta on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, I take this piece and divide by this piece. Uh, that just puts a g in the denominator here, and the m's cancel, so I get v squared over gr. So that's a tangent of theta. I guess I'll move over here where there's plenty of space. Tangent theta is equal to v squared over gr, which means theta is the angle whose tangent is v squared over gr, and then I can plug in my numbers, angle whose tangent is 16.6 .6 squared over 9.8 times 35. And we've got some numbers to crunch this time. So I have 16.6 .6 squared divided by 9.8 divided by 35, angle whose tangent is that number and I get 38.8 degrees. All right, that's not a realistic angle to see on a freeway or something because that's steep enough where if the road was wet and you got stuck in a traffic jam, the cars might just start sliding down into the gutter at the bottom of the bank. Um, but you do see banks turns in real life used um, to make the turn a little bit safer. It just reduces how much friction you have to have to turn the corner without slipping. 